Jart had the ex with his first wife, Aronor, hailing from Bray Rindra where she grew up, a countess's daughter. Although the couple put on a good show to the public, the marriage was not a happy one. When Aronor couldn't seem to get pregnant, Jartel announced that his wife was cursed and she fled home to Bray Rindra. Aronor lived her life a lonely spinster, who counseled young females on their relations with male Nibirans. She claimed herself as a Kinesia bearer, but her power was paltry to the point of not being recognized, and thus giving her a license to fly under the radar and make mischief. Well into her aeonic years, a girl she counseled gave her a device made by Kinesia, which was supposed to give a female pleasure. Aranor tried on the device after a young girl left, and when Aranor was found dead, the inventor was unable to obtain a license to market and sell what she named the Orgasma Belt. Jartail married again after turning 30. Hopes were high, for he and Queen Annalika hailing from House Cirist in the far north, but the king elected to divorce her after two miscarriages. Turning 35 and his royal work down to a science, Jartel quit his research job at the Valian University, Department of Biology, and married again. The couple were happy, and soon Queen Alahe was expecting. The king gave Alahay leave to visit her baronial family in Lashane, and off she sailed on the newly launched NSS Valmaxian. The ship capsized deep at sea during a dire winter storm, and the queen and unborn Lagati were never recovered. In the weeks following Jartel's loss of his much-loved queen, he falls into a well of despair and determines to end his life. After consuming a large portion of belladonna, the king becomes violently ill and hopes for life to end with haste. After long hours and well past the time he ought to have expired, Jartel panics and calls for medics. The medics arrive, accompanied by a Kinesia-bearing nurse who specializes in purging poisons. While treating Jartel, she diagnoses his previously undisclosed hedge powers. The king is highly resistant to most forms of poisonous plants and herbs. Her name is Frida, and she becomes Jartel's fourth wife. Following Jartel's recovery from the intended suicide, Frida has to recover his physical fitness, much of it lost sitting at a desk and performing the duties of a working royal. An interesting fact about the era of Frida was that she was only referred as the queen by members of the royal household. She was the only commoner ever to marry a Nibiran king, and this made Jartel very unpopular with the nobles. To make things worse, many members of parliament suddenly were with the aristocrats. Frida not being accepted by the ruling classes of Nibiru begins making Jartel bitter toward the nobles and as well the elected representatives of his subjects. The king's personality undergoes a transformation as he studies the rule of King Jartel the A. His grandfather, who united Nibiru by war and then spent a long life ruling as an unconditional autocrat. Seeing the writing on the wall, Frida begs her husband for a divorce and a return to her former life. Frida is given her way and returns to Valian to begin anew her career as a nurse. With the need to produce an heir still unmet, Jartel agrees to a marriage with a young daughter of the Edelteth barony. I am not going to consummate this phony marriage. What have I gotten into now? I have a magic knife forged of steel from the earth. Shit. I need my solicitors. It will take the dick and balls of a god. Imagine what it will do to an Iberian king. This one is going to kill me, whether touch or no. Get back here and face fate, you cowardly son of a whore! Not all noble families are sending forth unwilling daughters. Jartail may be slow on the uptake, but is far from dumb. The full reality evades the king until he married wife number six. 
Forgive me, Fowl, but it is plain now why your mum made me wait until our wedding to meet you. What do you mean, my lord? How many years are you? Eighty, my lord. I'll give you one chance. Are you sure about your age? Um, I'm certain Mum told me it was my age. Clever answer. What was the last year you completed in school? I was to begin seventh cycle, but now I've gotten married instead. At least you are honest. Oh yes. I'm the daughter of a very important Earl, and I'm proud to have betrothed my king today. So, you are twelve, or maybe thirteen? The former. By the gods, you are but a child. Not so, my lord. I began coursing this past year. If you were a proper and decent age to be my queen, we would not be having this discussion. My lord, no! My eggs are easily parted to deliver you all the heirs you need. Gods, I'm going to be sick. My lord, are you telling me I'm ugly? No, I'm saying you are too young. But it's not true. I've begun coursing and mum says I'm ready. Listen to me, Fowl. I have a degree from Valian University in Nibirin Biology. Basing my reasons on science and not my feelings, you are not ready to bear children. Well, my lord, what to do now? I do not wish for you taking the place of my father, and I came to this secret wedding a willing girl. And I only pray now that you take me to Valmaxian Palace, my husband. It can be expected of you being confused at this juncture. But it will all make sense over time. Let us pray first with the abbots, and then you go home with your parents. This wedding was a secret, as a precautionary measure. My lord, I understand that it's not your fault. My mum expects everyone to be honest with her, but she lies all the time. Young Fowl was queen for just one day, her wedding to Jartel a crown secret, and the reason these papers remain a restricted document. The Earl and his wife were sworn to secrecy under the duress of charges for fraud and violations of the child protection laws of Planet Nibiru. <laughs>